Thanks very much, Jack, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. As Jack mentioned, I am an engineer. I'm president of the Institution of Engineers this year. The institution was formed in 1818. The first president was somebody you may well have heard of, Manuel Thomas Telford. And I'm the 145th, so there's been a few uh, in between. What I wanted to talk about was really about the use of mathematics in, in engineering, and in, in some cases to assess risk, because um, all of the infrastructure that uh, you use every day has been informed, or been built by engineers, but certainly informed by the use of mathematics, everything from water supply and dams and bridges and, and so on. And we need to assess how that will affect society and how we can balance risk against cost. And then I'll finish up with um, what makes things fly. I guess you all know what this is. This is uh, the fourth bridge, half, uh, half built. Look very carefully at it, and you'll notice that some of the beams are, or the members are, fairly fat, and some are fairly slim. And I want to try and explain to you why that's the case. Uh, that's it when it was finished, and I can represent it uh, in this model here. This is, um, this is a, a Japanese engineer called Mr. Watanabe. It sounds very unusual, but Watanabe is about as common as the name Smith in Japan. Um, and they were demonstrating the principle, the cantilever principle, in this photograph of how the fourth bridge works. It, um, so it works on these balanced cantilevers. Uh, the bricks at either end are just to... Uh, represent the other half that you can't, uh, they haven't bothered putting in. And there's Mr. Watanabe sitting in the middle of it. And it's a very, in principle, a very simple structure, and I can represent it like this. So um, I've got this bridge that I want to design. I've got a weight of two W sat in the middle of it. That's two Watanabes, I suppose you could call it. But, um, but I only want one of them, so I can represent half of it like that. I just, because it's symmetric, I don't need to, I only need to do one half of it and I'll get it. If the members were inclined as an equilateral triangle, like this is here, I can work out the forces required in the members to support that weight of Mr. Watanabe, the weight W. And it turns out that um, the two members both have to take a, a weight W themselves. One is W pushing Mr. Watanabe up. And the other one is a weight W, a force W, pulling him up. And you might think, well, that's odd. I start out with a weight W, and I need W in two members to actually hold him up. And you'd think it should be half W. But that's because these members are inclined. They're not very effective at pulling vertically when they're leaned over to one side. And it gets even worse than that, because the fourth bridge isn't, hasn't got an equilateral triangle like this. It's a bit more... Um, well, that just shows you actually the forces do work in a little triangle. They go around and, and balance each other. But if we go to something that's a bit more extended, a bit more like the shape of the fourth bridge, still not quite like it, then it turns out I need the force of two W in each member to hold up one W. So I've got two, two W in the top member, two W in the bottom member, holding up this force of one W, which seems rather strange. But as you can imagine, if I pull that, if I make that weight go further out into the middle of the, of the Firth of Fourth, then the forces required in these members get bigger and bigger and bigger, to a point where eventually you couldn't hold the thing up at all. And by some fairly simple mathematics, which is shown here, I can show you that the force required in these two members will be well, it's, it's the weight that I'm having to support divided by twice the cosine of the angle uh, of the members to the vertical. And again, these will form a, form a triangle. So essentially, if I, I joined this, put this piece in here, it would form a closed triangle and would all balance. So again, let's look at the bridge. And again, look at the fact that the, some of these members are fat and some of them are thin. And why is that? I've got slender lattice members on the top. I've got large diameter tubular members on the bottom. So I'll just go back and just see. You can see that's the case. And I want, to under, I want you to understand why that is so. Because they're both taking the same force. They're both taking this force W. The only difference is, is that the top member is being stretched. It's in tension. And the bottom member is in compression. It's been squeezed together. And yet, the top member is a slender lattice, 
and the bottom member is this large diameter, diameter tubular member. And the reason is this, that the limiting factor for the top member is its strength. Is it strong enough? Will it break? It needs to take a load of at least W, for the example I showed you, um, or 2W in the other example, and we always had a factor of safety anyway. So it needs to take that load, and I've got to make sure it doesn't break. For the bottom member, something completely different happens. It's to do with stiffness. It's nothing to do with whether it breaks or not. It's a case of, will it buckle? So it needs to take the same load with the same factor of safety, uh, but it has to take it in compression. And I have to therefore make sure that it won't buckle. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I take a, a rod of iron or steel about a metre long, it's about that long, and about six millimetres in diameter, which is um, about the size of one of those pencils you might have picked up outside. If I, if I hang it from the ceiling and put a weight on the bottom, it'll take a load of about 7,000 newtons before it breaks. And if you don't know what a newton is, it's about the weight of an apple. So I could hang 7,000 apples off the end of this rod and it wouldn't break. Um, if I take a rod of steel, the same rod of steel, and instead of trying to pull it, I turn the whole thing upside down, I'll stick the apples on top of the steel so it's in compression, then it will buckle at a load of about 70 apples, 70 newtons, and I can show you that. Here's a, this is a hacksaw blade, but it'll do. If um, I can pull this, this is, I couldn't break this if I tried, it's just too strong, but um, if I do that, it buckles, all right? And so the answer is, is to make it fat, like this, here we are make it into a tube. And now, I can't, I can't buckle it. I can pull it, and I can press it, but I can't make it buckle. Whereas, this piece of steel, got nothing there, there's no stiffness. So that's why the members in this fourth bridge are made the way they are. So you can all go away now and design the new fourth bridge tomorrow.